love this late summer weather in eastern Ontario this time of year. Welcome back to the reboot. I have a question for you. Would you rather be doing this or these kinds of DIY projects? I like doing them both. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Before diving into today's video, I want to take a second and look at a safety issue. That's why we wear eye protection. Wheel just shattered. I was fortunate, none of the shattered pieces came back to hit me, especially not on the face. Most importantly guys, I was wearing my safety glasses and a set of gloves. I should have been wearing a long sleeve shirt. My mistake in that regard, but again guys, you saw it. Be careful out there with your DIY projects. Hi everybody, welcome back to The Reboot. I'm Peter here at The Reboot, if you're new to the channel. Thanks for coming by to watch this one today. I've got a little bit of work I need to do on my pickup truck. It's a 2007 Chevy Silverado. It's in pretty good shape for the year. Uh, just over 210,000 kilometers. I'll uh, put an indication what that is in miles. The work is superficial. It's not necessary, but I still want to get it done. I want to clean up some rust that I have on each of the wheel wells and on the rear gate. Again, it's not essential work, but it's nice work to get done. I have done a little bit of work like this in the past, way back when a summer job during university. Uh, learned how to do this in a machine shop. So I'm gonna see if I can recall some of those skills. And of course, I'll go to YouTube University and watch some videos there. But um, my goal here is to make the truck look better. I'm gonna channel my best Andrew Camerata, even though, and sorry Andrew if I didn't say the last name correctly. And uh, obviously the quality I do here will not be the quality that you'll get at a, a body shop, for example. So um, that's my objective. Let's go get our safety gear on and get busy with knocking the rust off the vehicle. Hey everyone, if you're going to undertake this kind of project, I think I've got a good collection of the tools and supplies you're going to need to do it. So, starting from this side, you've essentially got the tools that you need to start taking away the paint and the rust. Um, metal wheels that go on to either a drill driver and or wheels and other metal wheels that you can put on a 90 degree angle. As you start to get the rust off using these different types of sandpapers as well, you start to get into the rebuilding phase. And in mine, I've got some actual holes that I need to patch up. So I've got myself some of this wire mesh, this aluminum self-adhesive body patch. Um, you've got your Bondo mixing tray, the tools for the Bondo, the Bondo itself, some glazing putty to fine tune the Bondo on the back end. Um, but I forgot to mention this one here. This is a so-called rust converter. I got this because I'm not certain that I'm gonna be able to remove all the rust. So I'm gonna try this product and see if it neutralizes the rust uh, that, I get, that I leave behind. Once you've got the area prepped and ready for, or sorry, after you've done the Bondo, sanded it down, and you're ready for paint, I've got a primer, I've got the right paint color matched with GM, and then I've got a clear coat that I'm also going to put on. As well, you see here guys, I have my safety equipment, ear protection, two types of eye protection, and of course, a mask. I don't like breathing in that dust or getting it in my eyes. Um, and then of course, you are, are, are also going to need some towels and some paper towels. And the thing that I don't have here, which I have back on my workbench, is that I do have some uh, cleaning fluid as well to clean out the areas and prep them for the painting when the time comes. So there you go, guys. Those are the tools you're gonna need uh, to, do a, to do a decent job. I'm gonna use my right angle grinder first with a, I think it's a cutting disc ash actually. And then later on in the video, I use a sanding disc and I also use a wire brush to remove the rust. Thank you. 
I'm starting off pretty gingerly here. Again, I'm a novice. I'm, uh, I'm not exactly skilled at doing this. I have done this, like I said, many, many moons ago for a summer job during um, years at university. What you can see happening here, though, is that the rust on this wheel well or fender is actually uh, much worse than it appeared. And that's usually the case with rust. Uh, you, you start to remove the initial layers and then as you can see here I'm actually finding out that there's a bit of a hole and that uh, this is going to be a bigger job than I expected. It's not just surface rust. What I'm going to do in a second is stop on this side and check out the fender on the other side before I go any farther. This side's not nearly as bad. Um, it's also the side earlier on in the video where the uh, disc explodes. That's going to happen here in a second. But the main point of showing this clip is to just clearly indicate that the rust on this side isn't as bad as the other. The mishap with that um, disc made me rethink my safety approach a little bit, so I put on a jacket, as you can see here, changed my gloves to a heavier pair, and also swapped out that disc, like I said, for a wire brush. Able to continue on here and uh, effectively clean the rust out as if I was using that uh, sanding disc as well. Oh, and honey, if you're watching this, not to worry. I really am safe out here. I'm taking care of myself. Honey being my wife, of course. This other side is a bigger problem. As you can see, the grinding produced a gap down the side of the fender that's about anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch wide, probably about six to eight inches long. And unfortunately, it's also gone through, the rust has gone through the uh, lining, liner fender. I don't know what that's called, but the actual fender underneath the, the um, wall of the uh, wheel well as well as the uh, fender on the outside here. So I've actually got two holes uh, to fill, which is what my objective has now become, to try to uh, stabilize and make this fender look a little bit better. Everyone, this is a nasty hole. I thought this was just some surface rust here. So this is turning out to be a bigger job than I had intended. But um, like I said, I think I've got the right tools to do the job. I'm not so sure how much more I'm gonna try to cut back and move into this direction here or in this direction here. I've got that rust converter product. I'm gonna clean out this area in here, blow it out, and then hit it with that rust converter and see what happens before I move on with starting to patch and then bondo this area. The other side's not as bad as this, but uh, you'll see as I go along. The 
bottom section of the tailgate is in the worst shape. There are numerous holes and the underside, as you can see here from this insert, is extremely bad. So the objective here is not to make this pristine. It's just to clean it up and to make this tailgate functional uh, for maybe the next two or three years. And if I decide to keep the truck beyond that point, maybe I'll go out and try to source a used tailgate that's in better shape than this one. Okay, so here's this product, the rust converter. And I'm spraying it on the rusty areas. I've already sprayed a coat on already. I hope you guys can hear me in this lovely getup. I've masked it because they say you want to keep it off of paint that you don't want to touch. So like I said, I've already put on a coat. I've sprayed up into there. I've sprayed on the back side. So we're going to let that dry now. So this is the material I have to rebuild this hole. It's got a sticky back to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to lay it on the outside here. I'd prefer to have it somehow inside, but I've decided to go with laying it on the outside. Um, I just think that's going to work best. I'm just going to have to build up the Bondo slightly thicker here and, and do my best to work it down. But the second thing that's going on here is that the wheel well has its own lining and the two of them come together in a double wall here. And obviously to have this hole, as you can see, I can stick my hand all the way through, both the skin of the vehicle is deteriorated, but also the lining of the wheel well. So what I'm going to do is build up the inside of the wheel well and the outside at the same time. I might even use some stainless steel screws to help secure this one on the inside. So I'm going to try to size it right now, make a rough cut. So I want it to cover probably there to there, and I would like to be able to bend it at the bottom as well. I have two sheets like this, and I think that is going to be more than enough. Let's take off the backing and see if this sticks. And again, this is for the inside part. All right, I'm going to try some screws in here. Okay, so that's a half inch number eight stainless steel screw for sheet metal. And I'm gonna to try to use these to better anchor this aluminum in place. I think that worked. Let me see if I can get a close-up of the next one. Okay, so that's a half inch number eight stainless steel screw for sheet metal and I'm going to try to use these to better anchor this aluminum in place
I think that worked. Let me see if I can get a close-up of the next one. Now remember guys, I'm going to pack in Bondo and that will help hold this structure in place as well. I think what I might do is actually put some Bondo in between there right now. Okay, that's not bad. That's not great, but it's not bad. Well, a good little piece of steel to put that into. All right, so coming along. Hey guys, so I'm using what is sold as a paint thinner, but it's ideal, it says, for removing uh, grease and grime off of metal as well. So, guys, keep cleaning your uh, metal. Get all the possible contaminants off there that you can, you want to get off and keep off. Now, what's important here, guys, is again, I am not a professional body guy. I'm a guy with a little bit of knowledge uh, who didn't want to pay a lot of money to have this professionally done. The truck is uh, the truck cost me three thousand Canadian dollars. Okay, so I'm not going to put anywhere, I don't know what it would cost to redo these quarter panels, if that's what these are called, quarter panels. Um, but the job I'm going to do is not going to last a long time. Maybe I'll get a year, maybe two years out of it. There is still rust in these uh, joints here. I've got that other product that I said I want to use, um, this rust converter. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to spray some of that on and see what happens to it. I'm getting quite a bit of the rust out and with the Bondo work and hopefully that converter it will allow the patch job to last longer than I expect or maybe a little bit longer. So the other day I put on that first big patch along with that self-adhesive body patch material and I'm going to put some more of that body patch in there again today. But again, the products I'm using, the Bondo glass, so it's got fiberglass in the Bondo itself, so it's, uh, you can actually see it, it looks kind of hairy at times. What I'm going to show you here is how I mix up the Bondo. Again, it's useful to buy one of these mixing pallets gives you a good idea in terms of the instructions in terms of how much Bondo material you put on the pallet here. Okay, so you put about a four inch wide dollop if you can call it that. And then you put a strip of the hardener material across the middle of it. That's the active agent that gets this thing going. So I scoop out one or two. Interruption. I've used a. Um, that's probably enough to start here. It's actually quite a bit. Let's get it somewhat all together there. Don't worry about trying to get these tools super clean after use. These are super cheap. They deteriorate very quickly and what happens when the Bondo dries and hardens, you just actually bend it for the most part and it cracks off. So here we continue, put a line of the hardener across, that's more than enough there. Take your little spatula here and then fold it over. It's not the easiest thing to mix, but you're trying to fold it over in a way and mix in a way so that you're reducing the introduction of bubbles, limiting the introduction of bubbles that you put in here. 
I'm not very effective at it. Again, I'm a novice, guys. There's nothing special about my truck. It doesn't have to be showroom quality. There are several individuals online, if you want to look up some instructions on how to do this better than watching me, look online and they'll give you tips and techniques in terms of how to fold this over and reduce the amount of bubbles that you would have in here. So you see that the color has changed because the hardener is being mixed around. You've got about six to eight minutes to make this happen, guys. So you don't want to waste a lot of time with the mixing. Get it right and move on. Okay, so I mixed up my first batch and my objective here is to feed it into this in here. And what I actually want to do is put a little on the inside first. The objective here is to build up the gap and then place a new layer of the fiber mesh on this outside layer here. We want to keep this edge clean. Oh, there's a, a burr there. This stuff is not easy to work with, guys, so be ready for some challenges as you start to work with it. All right, let's try to get this last bit in there. All right, that looks relatively messy. Let's go back and get another load. I've got some crevices in there that I'm trying to push this into. Oh, this is probably not a good idea doing this in the sun. I think I'm getting it into the crevices, okay. It is quite messy, guys. And gals. Squeezing it into Bondo. Oh, my glove went ahead and absolutely messed with this one. Okay, Again, what we're going to try to do now is to lay it on. Oh, boy. You don't want this to be too thick or you're going to be sanding forever. So, that's starting to take shape, everyone. There's a big lump right there. Anyway, we're going to continue to shape that. We're going to sand that down a bit in the, maybe later today. As you can see here, everyone, I don't know why I didn't get it on film, but as you can see over here, 
and over here I've started to apply some of the primer and I did it on the inside of the fender area. There's a bit of work to make that look pretty, nice and smooth, a little bit of elbow grease with the sanding, various grits of sanding paper. So that's going to take a little bit of effort and time and of course through that process I'll be putting on another layer or t of two of finer Bondo material to smooth that out. Thanks for watching. In the next video I'm going to get down to sanding and you're also going to see more Bondo work, more sanding, primer on the fenders, the back gate, and then the application of the paint. Thanks for watching and hope you come back for future videos.